What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do menus with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video we're going to look at menus, but before we get started, if you like this video want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership, that's all my courses, videos, and books, for a one-time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video we're going to look at menus. So, what I mean by menus is we got it right here, these menus at the top of a program, you know, we can do things, and uh, that's what we're going to look at. So menus are actually pretty simple with Kenter. I'm kind of surprised it's taken me this long to get around to doing them because, uh, you know, most programs have menus at the top of them. You know, right here, we've got Sublime. It's got a whole bunch of menus at the top, right? Any program you use, it's almost always going to have menus on it. So how do we create them with Kenter? Well, it's pretty simple. First, we just define a menu. So we can call it anything we want. Let's just call this my underscore menu, and we set that equal to a menu. And where do we want this? We want this in our root directory. And I should mention that this is just the regular code we usually start with. It's gonna have, have a 400 by 400 thing, little icon, title, and here's our main loop that we've called root. So we wanna put this menu in root. Now from now on, we're gonna reference it as my menu as we would any other sort of widget that we use in Kinter. So now, this is a little bit different than all the other widgets. We have to actually configure this. And to do it, we just call root.config, and it's a function. And here we just set the menu to whatever menu we want. So we called ours my menu. So menu equals my menu. So this is just telling Kinter, hey, use my menu as the menu. And it knows what menus are, right? It knows menus go up at the top, it knows they drop down. It, it does all the stuff for us behind the scenes, so we don't have to worry about it, we just have to define it. So now we need to, let's say, create uh, a menu item, right? So it's just looking up here, we have file, edit, and selection. Let's start with file, let's call, and we could just call it anything we want, but let's call this file underscore menu. It's gonna be the first sort of thing in our menu here, this file right here. and we just set this equal to a menu, and then we, we tell it which menu. Well, we only have one menu, it's called my menu, so we're good there. So we sort of defined it, now we need to actually kind of put it up on the screen. You know, Kinter's always a two-step process, we define the thing and then we grid it or pack it, but we're not gridding or packing this, we're cascading this, because on menus, we cascade, right? So let's just go my underscore menu dot add underscore cascade, we can put a label here. So I'm gonna say um, this will be file. And the menu is gonna be file underscore menu. And what we're kind of doing here is creating little sub menus. And we're calling this first sub menu, the file sub menu, we're calling it file menu, right? We can call it anything you want, but uh, that's sort of what we're doing here. So, okay, now, we need to add things to our new little sub menu. So we can go file underscore menu dot add underscore command. And now we can put a label and let's set this equal to, I don't know, new and dot 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 maybe. And then let's give this a command. So what do we want to happen whenever we click that thing? Well, um, let's just put our command for now, and let's come up here and let's just uh, click command, and let's define it as our command. And for now, I'm just gonna say uh, pass. It doesn't do anything. We'll we'll figure out what we want to do with it later on. Okay, so let's add another one, and we could just copy this. It's always gonna be file menu, add command, and this new one. Let's just call this I don't know exit. And for here, instead of our command, we already know how to close programs. We've learned how to do this earlier. We can just do root.quit, and so that should work. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. I've saved it as menu.py, and let's pull this up and go python menu.py, just to see if this is working. And sure enough, there's file, new, and exit, 
If we click new, nothing happens because that we haven't filled that function out yet. But if we click exit, the whole thing closes and that's cool. So, all right, it's working so far. Now here's a fun little thing. You notice we had these two new and exit. We could put little separators between them. It's like a bar. And let's see if we look through here, like right here, there's this bar between it. It kind of separates things. That's really nice to use. And it's super easy. We just call file underscore menu dot add underscore separator. And it's just a function and we don't even have to pass anything into it. So if we save this and run it, pull this over. Now there's this bar between them and that's kind of nice. And so that's cool. Okay, so we've got one, one thing, a file. Now let's say we want another one, edit. Let's go create a, an edit menu item. And we're just gonna do the exact same thing here, but we're gonna call it a different menu. So let's call this one edit menu, right? And it's gonna be a menu and it's gonna be on my menu. And now we can go my underscore menu dot add underscore cascade. And we can go label equals and we want to call this one edit. And we want to put it on the menu of edit underscore menu, which again is just what we called it just here. So this next edit button, so to speak, is an, a new menu. We called it edit menu. Now we're cascading that onto our main menu and that's pretty simple. Now we can go edit underscore menu. Just, I'm just gonna copy these two things. Let's just paste and I don't want the separator here. And instead of file menu, it's gonna be edit menu obviously. And instead here, let's go cut and copy. And instead of Let's go our command. Now for each of these buttons or each of these uh, sort of drop down things, you would not put our command for each one. You would put a different function because you want when somebody clicks on that, you want something different to happen every time. I just put this function here because it's easy and we're not, we already know how to do functions and stuff. We're, so we're not going to get into that in this video. We're just creating the menu. So that's what I'm doing. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it and see if that did what it's supposed to. And so file, edit, yep, cut, copy, nothing happens when we click on them. Exit. And it's just that easy. So now that you know how to do two, you can do as many as you want. So we can just copy all of this if we wanted to. And let's, uh, I don't know, create uh, an options menu item. And instead of edit menu, we would call this options menu. And it's in my menu. And then let's put options and it would be in options menu. And then we change this to option and this to option. And instead of cut and copy, we want, I don't know, what's something else. Find and find next, I don't know. Whatever you like. So if we save this, come back, run it. Boom, that's cool. So pretty simple. Now, if we wanted to play around with this a little bit, I guess we could come up here to our command and we could go my underscore label equals a label and it's in root and the text equals you clicked a drop down menu. Woo! <laughs> that should be capitalized. Uh, dot pack. I don't know if we save this now and run it. Now, when we click something, boom, you clicked a drop down menu. And every time we do it, it does that. <laughs> right? So you get the idea. You know how to use functions already. Anything you want these things to do. Uh, you can do. So uh, in the next couple of videos, we'll look at this a little bit more and we'll look at using frames so that when you click these things, like the whole new screen changes to a different looking thing uh, or maybe opens another window or, or something fun. And uh, we'll start to look at those in the coming videos. But yeah, pretty simple. So just to, you know, quickly recap, you start out by just sort of configuring your menu. 
call it anything you want. We called ours my menu, and it's a menu widget. We stick it in root. Then we the only weird thing is we have to configure it. So it's root.config, and then we just tell our program wh what menu to use, which is my menu. And then just to create items, we just create a sort of top level thing like file or edit or selection and add it to our menu. And then we just ca cascade that thing in like that. And pretty simple. We add to add items, you just add a command onto that sub menu, put your label, put your command, and you're good to go. Uh, the only other weird thing is this little separator, which is super easy and uh, pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 40 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 85,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.